Last week, we talked about five strategies for raising emotionally strong children. Right. And this week, we're going to talk about some mistakes. This is, not, this is by the same author, the same um, right. article, mm-hmm. uh, an article from the same author. That's how you should say it, I suppose. Um, for seven things that, uh, seven mistakes that parents make that negatively affect right. our kids' self esteem and confidence and the way that they feel about themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is Amy Marin, it's her name. And um, she has a, almost a cottage industry. She has yeah. books and articles published on how to raise yeah. emotionally strong, resilient, independent children. Yeah. Okay? And in this particular article, she talks about the seven biggest mistakes that parents make. Mm-hmm. I think last week we talked about what you should do. Right. These are the, the mistakes, that, seven mistakes that parents make that deny children the ability to develop self-confidence and self-esteem. Right. Okay. So when we're talking about self-confidence and self-esteem, of course, what we're talking about is the way the child feels about him or herself. Right. Now that is usually something that American children have no concern about because if if there is anything that um, any area that um, American, especially American teenagers, mm-hmm. uh, excel in. It's usually self-esteem. It's self-esteem. We have the, um, there's been research conducted, uh, international studies mm-hmm. done, that American teenagers have the highest sense of self-esteem of any country in the world. Right. Okay. We, we're, we're very... We're not doing really well in reading and math and science, <laughs> right. but we're doing really well uh, in self-esteem. Right. We're, <laughs> they're feeling good about themselves. That's right. Now, but with that being said, the reason that it's important that we talk about self-esteem is because... Self-esteem does relate to those other things. Mm-hmm. It does relate mm-hmm. to academics. It does relate to our ability to you know, become successful, however right. we choose to define success, mm-hmm. become successful adults. And so um, it's, it is important that we consider self-esteem because right. we want to have an, a healthy amount of self, self-esteem, not so much that that's, because that's dangerous right. or too little because that's dangerous. We want to have just the, the right amount. And we want self-esteem to be based on uh, competence, a feeling of competence that I'm able to do things. Right. And that's where my self-esteem, not just that I was blessed genetically right, right. or that I was born into a certain kind of family, but rather that I am confident because I am competent. Right. Okay. And that's what, that's what we want to build in children. Absolutely. So in this article, she talks about some things that parents do that actually damage our kids' That's right. uh, self-esteem. Mm-hmm. So, um, so what's the first one is don't let them escape responsibility. Right. Okay. And that goes along with what we talked about last week with letting right. them fail sometimes and, and maybe helping them uh, problem solve, right. but allowing them to work through that. You mm-hmm. know. So we have to give them that opportunity. Right. So things like chores. Right. You know the issue comes up all the time. Chores are not a stressor, right. okay? And nor should you ever allow it to be a stressor. Normal chores right. shouldn't be. That's right. That's right. You know, taking out the trash, right. cleaning the cat litter, um, cleaning up your messes, right. okay? Those sorts of things. Those are not stressors. Those are opportunities. It's not a burden. Mm-hmm. Um, children will often argue, well, I have homework, or right. I have practice, or I have stuff. We all are busy. Everybody's busy yeah. in, in a family. And even if you're not busy, even if you're a stay-at-home parent, you shouldn't do everything for your children because chores, giving your children age-appropriate chores is a very good way for them to learn how to f- feel competent right. in, in succeeding, in right. doing the chore. And we're certainly not, as, not suggesting that stay-at-home parents aren't busy. No. Because we know you're busy. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, if, if your kid says, yeah, but I have practice or I have this or I have that, you know, the response could be, well, who do you think is taking you to practice? Right. Who do you think is going to be sitting there while you're at practice? And so that's yeah. taking me from those things as well. And so, right. But I still have to you know, right. cook, prepare dinner and I still have to do all these other things that I have to do. So you still have to do all the things that you need to do. Right. But if, if you're parents and you see chores as a way to teach your kids how to be competent, it's right. not an obligation, it's not a stressor, it's not a punishment. Right. Okay? This is an, a very good way to teach children how to become competent. They do have responsibilities. Right. You live in a house, you have responsibilities. Right. Start teaching that early. Right. Mm-hmm. Now the second one may, be a, may seem to some parents as being a little bit counterintuitive, but we actually damage our children's self-esteem when we don't allow them to make mistakes. That's right, that's right. Did I say that right? Did I do all the don'ts in yeah, the right place? You, you, you have to let them make mistakes. Right. Be- allowing them to make mistakes is going to actually improve, increase their right. self-esteem. That's right. If you if you prevent your children from making mistakes, yeah. now I don't care what the mistake. Now, if it's a life-threatening mistake, that's that's right. different. Yeah. I'd 
you don't drink and drive and you don't do right. you know that sort of stuff but the normal mistakes that kids make especially young children uh, preschool uh, early elementary school age children their mistakes are typically not right. catastrophic and that's the time to learn from your mistakes right. because it's only, if you don't let them make mistakes you're going to rob them of the opportunity to right. learn from their mistakes Absolutely. and as we've said time and time again on this program mistakes are life's best teachers Absolutely. okay that's that's where you really learn the lessons it's not right. from it's not a series of successes. Right. It's your failures that teach you the most. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Now, another one that is related to what we talked about last week mm -hmm. is that um, to help our kids have good self-esteem, we need to stop protecting them, stop protecting them from their emotions. That's we have to let them experience their emotions, um, express their emotions in a healthy right. way, but mm -hmm. don't protect them and, and remove things that's going to make them feel. Right. That's right. Let them have this full range of emotions, right. um, because what you're going, what they're going to learn is what triggers those emotions. Right. Okay, so they'll learn how to avoid the triggers, which is something we teach every day in our practice. Absolutely. Is what are the triggers? So they learn to identify the triggers, which is right. important, and then they learn how to manage. They learn right. how to self-regulate. They learn how to get themselves calmed down if right. they get aroused. Right. Okay? Right. Now, in in the in the era of um, <laughs> bullying and and you know all of these things that we're seeing so much so heavily in schools today mm -hmm. um, the next one I think is really important absolutely um, because we have to protect our kids from developing the mentality of being a victim right. um, so many kids uh, you know we see kids a lot of times who will talk about being bullied by the te their teacher or bullied by other kids and when you actually talk to them about what's happening it's a disagreement or it's right. it's a um, it's a very typical exchange between that, that kid and you know another kid or between their, with their teacher, um, but they see themselves as being a victim all the time right. so frequently that each time somebody disagrees with them, they see that as bullying or some kind of confrontation mm -hmm. uh, against who they are, and That's so right. we we have to prevent them from having that that type of victim mentality. Right. So don't condone. Right a victim mentality right. in your children okay yeah. um, discourage self-pity right. you know don't don't give you know you just have to discourage that stuff right. um, frequently children will, will um, come to the parents and say well I'd like to go but I don't have the money or I'd like to you know I want I want these shoes and the parents say well we, we can't afford those shoes okay mm -hmm. this is a good time for a child to take action right. okay don't don't sit here and feel sorry for yourself because you can't right. go out and raise some, go out and raise some money. Mm -hmm. You want to you want to get something that we can't afford? Go out and raise the money for that. Yeah. The other place where I get to, where that bothers me is with coaches or teachers, where the child will come up, well, the coach doesn't like me, or right. my teacher doesn't yeah. like me, or my teacher treats me differently. That's condoning the victim mentality. Right. Don't go there. Don't allow your children right. to go there. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. something about it. Yeah, a good strategy, for example, is to encourage your kid to talk to the coach, talk to the teacher. Say, right. if you feel as though he or she is treating you differently, mm -hmm. talk to them about it. Right. That's, that's helping them problem solve. That's not fixing the problem for them. Mm -hmm. That's teaching them how to problem solve. Right. And so if they may say, well, no, I can't do that. Say, it's okay. You don't have to do it. Right. Like, this is one strategy you can use. You don't have to do it, but... You can't feel sorry for yourself right. about it. Okay, Absolutely. let's figure out again. We talk about collaborative problem solving. Right. How can we solve this problem? Right. Again, teaching, teaching, teaching. And this leads really nicely into the next one, which is mm -hmm. parents who um, who want to help foster healthy self healthy self esteem in their kids right. um, are not overprotective. You know, right. if we if we want to our kids to build and have good self-esteem we have to let them experience these things mm -hmm. and stop over protect stop serving as that overprotective parent right one of the places we see this is with um, social isolation right. is that parents will say well I don't want my child to be exposed to right. whatever well, newsflash none of us want our children to be right. exposed to negative, mm -hmm. um, well, however you want to define it, things, okay? Right. There's no parent, we don't want our children, but we know that our children are going to encounter these things. So to isolate your children and to think that you can protect them from the world right. is really, I don't think you can. First of all, I don't think you can, but right. you can until they step out of the house, right. okay? Once they yeah. step out of the house, 
regardless of what age it is. It might be for some kids it's 10, for some it's 12, for some it's 18, for some it's 25. Once they step out, yeah. they're going to encounter a world full of everything. Right. And they have to be, our obligation as parents is to teach our children to be prepared right. for everything. Yeah. Much better to have your children exposed and to help them deal with it at a young age rather than encounter it for the first time at age 18. Absolutely. And, and the natural consequence or the natural um, next step to some of these things is that parents have to stop expecting perfection. Right. Um, and that, that's number six on the list. And it, it doesn't matter how you get, or right. how you define it. Yeah. Okay. You can't have a perfect school. You can't have a perfect child. Right. You can't have perfect anything. Yeah. Okay? Pa parents are uh, parents are um, taken aback sometimes, or even kids are taken aback sometimes when I when I tell them how frustrated I feel about the idea of straight A's. Right. Um, very few students should be making straight A's. That's right. I mean, if we think about what A's represent, you know, exceeds expectation, uh, outstanding. This is well above average. Mm -hmm. um, if we think about that, you know, that model of, um, of grading, mm -hmm. very few students should be getting straight A's. And if, if you're getting straight A's, there's something wrong that suggesting that either the curriculum is too easy uh, or I don't know. There's something. There's something up with that. But you yeah. know, the, so many students that are having you know five point something GPAs out of four point oh scale um, because they're making straight A's in college student in college classes and they're only right. in ninth grade. It doesn't make sense. What What does that mean? Right. Um, this whole <laughs> grades. Oh, you get me started. Um, there was a time, not so very long ago. I am still alive when a C or a B was a very good grade. Yeah. I mean, that was, you. what a C meant was, you're doing everything you're supposed to do. Right, okay? it's average. It's a B meant average. you're working a little bit above, yeah. and an A meant you were somehow, for some reason, doing superior work. You yeah. were either doing extra work, or you were doing, it was so far above what was expected right. that you got an A. Um, a B was really, really good, right. okay? A C was perfectly fine, as long as you had a C, right. It meant that you were doing everything that was, that's what a C meant. Right. Okay. It meant that your child is doing everything he or she should be doing at grade level. Right. Nobody was bothered with a C. It was right. a C was okay. Right. It was all right. Okay. That has changed. And now there is this expectation. Now an A has become the new C. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, an A now is you are doing everything that you're expected to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get an A. Right. Okay. Um, in order to get above an A, right. now you have to take college classes in high school. Right. Okay. Well, if you're in high school and you can do college work, then either the college work might not be hard enough because as a high school student, you shouldn't be able to do college work. Well, or if you can, you still shouldn't, certainly shouldn't be making an A. That's right. You shouldn't be making straight A's. If you're in high school taking college right. classes, um, that's like this whole thing about let's start algebra one in the seventh grade. Okay, that's a high school class. If a seventh grader can do a high school class, why is that? Right. You know, first of all, they shouldn't need to, right. because it, it doesn't buy them anything, it doesn't get them anything. Because by the time they get to calculus, calculus is really a college. Right. For most students, it's a college course, yeah, absolutely. Or, or should be a college course. And, and so much of this has to do with just your level of thinking. Your, your, your level of cognition that has to develop. It doesn't right. just happen just because you're in the class. It just, it has to develop with time. Right, right. So, so what we're talking about here is expecting perfection, right. expecting all A's, expecting right. only success, expecting right. only superior performance, whether it's in the classroom, the athletic field, no matter where it is. If you, expecting perfection is one of the mistakes that parents make. Absolutely. Okay? And the last one that she lists in, in, this, um, in this article is, and I think it's a beautiful differentiation between punishing and disciplining. Right. You know, one of the things we talk about in our book is yeah. that, is the idea of discipline. Discipline comes from education. Right. It, it's teaching. Right. And so the, the idea of punishing a student or a kid for misbehavior versus teaching them how better to behave or how, you know, the decisions that they should right. be making, choices that they should be making. That's a very big difference. When I think of discipline, I think of that wonderful talk that the um, 
head of the Navy SEALs did at the University right. of Texas a few yeah. years ago. And he talks about discipline. Mm -hmm. And the first thing he says, first thing you do is you get up and make your bed. Your it bed. begins with making your bed. And I think of SEAL training or military training or any type of rigorous, mm -hmm. that's discipline. Right. Okay. And what we should be doing is disciplining our children, which right. is teaching them that. Right. Okay. Teaching them how to persevere, right. teaching them how to withstand hardship, mm -hmm. withstand failure, withstand right. mistakes. That's discipline. Right. Take punishment and get rid of it altogether. That's right. the most, to me, the most important thing of these seven is get rid of, get rid of this idea of, of punishment because punishment tells the child they're bad. Right. That, that's the main thing you're saying right. is there's something, there's something wrong with you. You're, you've been bad. No, we should be teaching our children discipline. Right. And if you think about um, some of the some of these differences, or so think about what we're what our goal is in mm -hmm. this, with, which is you know um, building self esteem. Right. You know, self esteem comes from a sense of competence, as we started right. out started out this podcast talking about. It's the belief and the understanding and appreciation that you can solve problems, you can take care of yourself, you mm -hmm. you are able to you know withstand certain things. Right. You do that through understanding. Right. You do that through appreciating where, you know, why certain things happen and how to deal with some certain things. Mm -hmm. That's education. That's right. not punishing. That's right. And that's what we should be doing. Right. Teach, don't punish. It's right. the, the core of our book, How right. to Raise an Emotionally Absolutely. Healthy Child, is teach, don't punish. Stop right. punishing kids. Start teaching them. Let them develop discipline. Right. Okay? And it doesn't come through punishment. It comes through teaching. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Yes. That's the seven. Seven. The link to the article is in the show notes. So if you want to read it and, and check out some of the examples uh, presented there, that would be great. Right. Yep. Um, and certainly write to us. Let us know what you think. If there's any particular topics that you're interested in that you would like to hear us talk about, we'd be happy to uh, put some stuff together and do so. Right. And we will respond to those emails. Those, Keep those emails coming. We will respond yeah. to them. Um, we had yeah, a problem definitely. with them, right? Um, with our notifications in YouTube, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but we're getting them now, and so right. we will be uh, be responding to those. So yes, and please, we're not forgetting you. Keep keep uh, stay in touch. Yes, okay. absolutely. So, all right, that's it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Mm -hmm.